My mom phoned me frantically at, right at the end of my class, right when my prep started, that Ty was having a seizure. So I started to panic and I raced into my vehicle and I drove about 200 kilometers down our gravel road to get home and then I found him in the crib seizuring. You think it's it's never going to happen to you. You know, you're, ne you're not going to be affected by it. It's never going to happen to you. And then with dad's diagnosis and how fast everything happened, um, that's what's scary. Well, he started getting back pain in April preparing for Roddy's gala. He just blamed it on being on his feet too long. I couldn't stand that much. And as it got... April got closer to May and it got closer to Gala. There was like stuff you couldn't do. Finally, we were referred to a pain specialist, which actually was a friend of the family. He said, let me see your back. And like, Jerry picked up the back of his shirt. <laughs> I mean, he was a skeleton by then. And he goes, I really don't think there's anything wrong with your back. He ordered a, a CT scan. He said, well, I hate to tell you this, but you have cancer. Jerry was just, I don't know. I, he heard it, but I don't know if he processed it. From the time he got diagnosed to when he got into the hospital, just to see this rapid deterioration, and I mean it, it was a rapid deterioration, um, where he would just be, you know, basically sitting on the couch here, just rocking back and forth in and, and just debilitating pain. It was just really, just a really bad, really bad time. And then they told us that he needs to see a thoracic surgeon. For, to take a um, biopsy. By the next week, he was just in so much pain. And like I say, Bobby had a doctor's appointment. Bobby told him what was going on with Jerry. He says, you know what? Something doesn't sound right here. So he said, just give me five minutes. He canceled all his appointments. He came home with Bobby, took one look at Jerry, and he said, this is out of my field, but he started writing. He said, you go to emergency with my letter, and you get him admitted for pain management. And that was on a Friday. And he lasted till the following Sunday. He first seizured when he was 22 months. And I actually remember that day because that morning he just looked really odd and he was sitting in his high chair and he was just puking. At lunchtime, I came, my mom was watching him that day, so I came home, I took him to the doctor, and he looked totally fine. He was running around, he was laughing, but something just told me, don't go back to work, stay home. I was at work that day, and uh, I got a call from the office saying that, you know, an ambulance been called for your son, he's going to the hospital. And uh, talking to my wife on the phone there, as she was panicking, that he was having a seizure. And in the ambulance, I was just numb, I was like, and he was almost turning, like he was turning kind of blue and um, he didn't look good and he seizured for almost an hour and a half. You know, we went to Children's Hospital and he was still having a seizure while I got there. And I got there right when the ambulance arrived and I seen him come out. And, uh, you know, after looking at the seizure, they gave him a CT scan and uh, they found a lesion on his brain. And when they put you in a room by yourself, just you and your wife, and to come talk to you later, you sort of, you're, it just stinks in your stomach and you, you know something ain't right. The way that the tumor looked on the CT scan, it didn't look like an atypical type of tumor. It looked, they said it looked more like swelling. So they put him on a round of antibiotics and he was in the hospital for about two weeks. And then they were gonna MRI him again. So they MRI'd him in July because he was in the hospital in May and it, the, the mass had grown again. Well, the cancer he has is called uh, gliomatosis cerebri, and it's what they call an infiltrated brain tumor. It was described to us as, you know, his brain is the sponge, and if you took that sponge and soaked it in water, the tumor was the water that was inside that sponge. And to be able to get all the water out, you can't wring it out, you can't dig it out, it's part of the brain tissue now. You don't think about things when someone passes. You know, you don't think about their birthday. You don't think about an anniversary. You don't think about the holidays. So within the first year, I mean, obviously that void was clearly there. 
Um, you know, the holidays weren't so happy this year. Occasions weren't very happy this year. Obviously good days and bad days, but you just kind of have to take it one day at a time. The biggest thing when I think about my dad is just how proud I am of him and how many lives he's touched and what an influence that he's been to so many people. I was on the radio and stuff and a lot of people were phoning me at the hospital saying, what's going on? I just heard on the radio, a hustler and lawless are saying, you know. And he knew everybody and he would just <laughs> go out of his way to help everybody. Um, and then when he passed or went, you know, the couple days that he was in the hospital before he passed, just to see like how devastated the entire community was. It, it really just made you understand like how important he was to this city and not just to us, but to so many people um, through the Blue Bombers and through Variety and people were devastated. The later last part of his life, my dad was, you know, back into performing um, something he loved doing. And, you know, he was doing that again and he was happy doing it. And it's just such a shame that, you know, that was, you know, cut short. I'm also very glad that I got to, per, you know, perform with him, because um, that, you know, was something that we never did, and that was something very special to me. Again, this this entire past year has just been extremely difficult. Yeah. Go. Every year now, it's forty thousand dollars worth of medication for him, even though he's been, we won't call it cancer free, but he, there hasn't been any growth in his cancer for you know, eight years. And the, the treatment that he had, you know, fortunately enough, we were able to administer at home. Right. But it was a daily routine of hiding medication and ice cream and, and him having, you know, rashes around his mouth from the, the, the medication and him being sick. Probably the hardest two years. You, you don't know, every day is, a day where you are thankful that he's still around. He's super active. We try to keep life as normal as we can for him. We try to get him as involved as many things. You know, he's so athletic. You know, there are challenges when he does play sports is because exercise does trigger seizures. It's trying and then you see other kids that don't have that struggle and he just wants to play so badly and he has to deal with that extra thing. You know, I think what happens too is a lot of people, you know, you get affected by it and you just, some people just shut down and they don't want to talk about it and they don't want to tell their story. But I mean, it's important, uh, like had we said, whether it's a quick diagnosis, whether it's something that people live with for years, you know, it's important to get that message out and it's important for people to talk about it. And people donating and things like that to go towards something that could help change somebody's life is, I mean, that's important. More research and treatments uh, can be, you know, brought about. Um, to prevent a lot of a lot of suffering um, and that's you know I just that would be my message to people until somebody has gone through what we've gone through they won't know how painful and how much it means to have research have professionals in place that can deal with cancers like Ty has People need to know what it could touch your family at any given time. And, you know, you gotta be prepared for that. And, you know, if it doesn't, be thankful, but help out. When he first got diagnosed, I, it didn't feel like there was any hope. You know, just with age and technology and with all the research and the money spent, you know, those are well spent money. You know, if you can save a kid's life and let them go to kindergarten, because I never thought Ty would go to kindergarten, you know, and I actually get to teach my son, which is one of the best things that I've ever got to do, you know, and I get to see him graduate high school and, you know, one day, you know, get a career or maybe get married, you know, and, and just those dollars can allow, you know, some kids to be able to do that.